seed saving brings another whole dimension to gardening. <laughs> Your own home sow seed, it feels very empowering that you're taking the cycle right the way through. And I've got some examples here and we're going to see some seeds that I've sown and then saving seeds. And I'll show you some ideas of how you can do it. And here's, just to give you an idea, one of the more difficult ones. <laughs> uh, onions, like all root vegetables, actually needs to be... Um, you need to store a bulb or root over the winter because it's biennial it will then flower and make it seeds the following summer so these four onions here these were multi sown in a clump i just pulled them out of the ground and i would save the biggest one there uh, mainly because well it's probably got a bit more genetic information to make a big one and also its size means that it's got more energy to make a nice vigorous flowering stem and seeds next summer so I'll keep that over winter, plant it in the spring, possibly in our climate here, which is rather damp in the polytunnel. That'll give me more chance of harvesting some dry, high quality seeds next summer. So this is a bit about thinking ahead with some of them. Whereas other seeds are much quicker, like French beans, for example. Um, onions, by the way, do cross pollinate. They need to cross pollinate to make viable seeds. So you can't just grow one onion plant. You would need ideally six, maybe even eight, so that all the flower pollen cross-pollinates, then you get a stronger, more viable seed. Uh, whereas French beans and peas as well, you can do from one plant only. So these are some French beans, which I sowed last late spring, grew through the summer, saved the seed late summer. And I sowed them this spring. And this is one of the beauties of home sow seed. Everyone came up, well, maybe one out of 40 didn't, but you know, you get such strong germination and it's that home save quality these seeds are used to growing here and and they just want to grow again uh, sometimes i find with seed i've bought you know it's a bit reluctant and then other ones that we'll be looking at is broad beans and um, lettuce and i'll just mention also coriander so somewhere here i think it's there yeah coriander is a nice example um, of home safe seed because it's you can see quite large seed easy to handle easy to clean and it is the one that needs to cross pollinate it's one of the carrot family umbellifers so like carrots still coriander parsnip they all need a few plants so I let a few of them flower which is very nice nice for insects kept the seed last summer and again when I sowed them this spring they all came up very happily and they made beautiful coriander so that the reason partly I was doing that was this is a very nice variety I've discovered called Cruiser which is um, particularly large leaves and um, has been very successful here. So let's have a look at some different varieties of vegetable for sowing and seeding. So peas which peas and plants to save the seeds from well the main decision with peas is do you like them if it's a variety you like the flavor of go for it and then you just want to make sure it's a reasonably strong plant and that you choose some nice pods <laughs> i really don't want to overcomplicate it so this is oregon sugar pod uh there were two different sowings here these being a bit earlier they didn't get quite as vigorous as the ones up the other end but still good for keeping seed and to give you an example, there's different stages of growth here. Like, if I pick one or two there, or there, or here, there's different stages of maturity. And here's a one actually <laughs> that's good to eat. That's not ready for keeping seed from yet, so, but we can eat that. Uh, any of these are good. So the pod has started to go leathery and dry. It's a decent sized pod. All of them are decent sized pods. So let's have a look and see what's in here. Nice. That is seven seeds and they all look good. It, what you can find sometimes with peas is pea moth. Only four in that one. Uh, I've not noticed that makes a difference necessarily. Um, but there is a pea seed that I wouldn't keep which it's kind of broken a bit and sometimes you can get seeds which have been eaten by a pea moth caterpillar 
Uh, I'm not seeing any here actually, but you would know that because basically got, they've got a hole in and little caterpillar debris. But these peas are not yet dry. The actual peas are not dry. I've found though from picking pods at that stage, not totally dry, these are still good and viable. So I'm gonna pod these out at this stage and then they will dry, um, say in sunlight on a window in the house for about a week and you've then got a dry seed which is good to go and that's really all there is to it then just keep it in a say a yogurt pot or, or a, an envelope and sow it the following spring so this is Oregon sugar pod um, but any variety of pea you can do something similar to this you you're waiting till it's harvestable we've, we've eaten some pods from here uh, but we didn't eat them all and we left some to go to seed Broad beans, so these are spring sown, they were sown in February and there's the last few that I didn't pick so I left them whoops, <laughs> to dry for seed and that is an example of broad beans ready for saving the seed. Now there is a proviso to broad beans which is that they will cross pollinate and actually these ones did have a different variety growing here. These are Monica, very tasty beans, so I want to save some seeds from it. And that one was Aquadarchia claudia. So I'm not actually going to save these for seed, but we're going to eat them. You can eat them as dry uh, bean in the winter, soak them overnight and then eat them. Uh, but I've got some other Demonica growing over there. Same as these, Same. everything's the same about them, except that they've been growing just on their own without any other broad bean varieties nearby to cross pollinate. How much distance you need? Well, every book article says something different. Um, I find in practice, it's not as far as it's often claimed to be. I think a lot of the distance is given are playing on the safe side. So in terms of my garden here, probably from here to the compost heaps, I think you'd be safe in terms of a distance because there's often things in the way that slow down the passage of insects. For instance, between here and the compost heaps, there's those tall beans there, for example. So, you know, there's often that happening or a hedge or something. But whatever it is, you, you let your pod get reasonably dry. Like peas, it could be a bit less dry. Some of these pods are not quite as dry. So this one's a bit leathery and green still. You can see the pod, the beans are a little bit more green and rounded, not quite so shriveled. And these would still be good to shell out and keep for seed. You just want to make sure they're dry before you put them into a, a jar or um, a packet, however you're going to store them. Here are two different vegetables which are both good to grow in isolation in terms of you only need one. Um, actually, I didn't put that very well really. What I meant is that, you know, they, you don't need several for cross-pollination. So this one lettuce has enough genetic information in it to carry on the strain, the variety, which is Grenoble Red. It's one of my favorite winter varieties. So this is a lettuce. And I sowed it last September and we were picking leaves off this very plant um, from late November every fortnight or so until the middle of March. And at that point I selected it as being a, a nice sample of lettuce, basically big leaves and strong bushy growth, very healthy. And we stopped picking it, so it made a heart during late March and April. And then by May the heart broke open, it makes these flower stalks. Lettuce flowers are a little bit of a disappointment. You don't really see much. Um, they're kind of pale yellow and very invisible. And then the flower buds become these seed pods. So inside each little pod here, which has that tuft on top. I've lost a few there, but basically that's lettuce seed there. And these are pretty well ready now. So there's no advantage I'm seeing to leave this any longer. I'm going to untie it from its stake twist out the whole plant and hang it upside down under cover in my garage over a sheet in case any seeds drop out and let it dry some more and then after three or four weeks it'll all of this will be really dry and it'll be 
fairly straightforward, not that easy actually to get the seed out. What we found is a good method is rubbing, uh, get that whole thing and rub it between two big blocks of wood. For example, you've got to work a bit to get the seeds out of the pods which are holding them. So that's lettuce and then down here we have a much quicker one to seed which is French bean. So this is my lovely favourite um, variety Orinoco yellow podded French bean and you can see how the pods we haven't picked are getting quite fat and full. They're feeling hard actually now. Not ready yet in terms of seed but the seed is well developed inside there already and it's probably about three weeks from now to that becoming uh, a dry pod with little white seeds in. Actually I've got some from this variety which I sowed last autumn, oops, saved last autumn, and that's what they look like. So they're not very big. And each of these pods might have five or six little seeds like that in them. And that was all from uh, two plants. In fact, this year I'm just doing one plant because I've got so many more than I need. So one plant like this can give uh, up to 100 seeds you know, viable seeds, that's after you've sorted out the little ones. So seed saving of the simple vegetables like this can be very, very worthwhile. You know, how many French bean plants do you need to produce a crop? Um, I'm selling quite a few here and just in this polytunnel, I've got 25 plants and that selling quite a few a week. So you don't need many. And with the lettuce that we were looking at, that's like one plant makes thousands of seeds, you know, maybe 2000, uh, way more than and I need for even commercial use. So um, it, seed saving like this is a good thing that you could do maybe with your friends and, and some of you do one and some do another. And just to finish off, we're gonna have a look at um, one of the neatest of all really and simplest is tomatoes. Tomatoes are really one of the simplest and nicest things to save the seed from because You've got the bit you eat already is where the seed is. So you haven't got to do anything special to save seed, but there's one thing you do need to be careful about is to save seed only from open pollinated tomatoes, which means they are not F1 hybrids. Hybrids have been inbred artificially, and then when you sow their seed, they don't come true. So Sun Gold's a very nice example, a lovely tomato which quite a few of us grow, but you can't save the seed. I did try it once and I got all sorts of horrible tomatoes growing as a result. We're not nice to eat. Um, but you can save side shoots in the autumn. That's another story. But for saving seed of most tomatoes, which are open pollinated like these are, so there's four different varieties here. And I can save seed from each one and I know that they will grow true. They won't have cross pollinated. So it's just a beautiful one to start with maybe. And all you need to do is get a ripe tomato like that and then cut it open and save the seed. And one little tip is to, not a huge number in that one, but enough to be worthwhile, um, put the seed into a little jar with some water until they start to ferment, even go a bit moldy. Might take three, four, five days. And then that helps to break down the um, germination inhibiting deposits on the outside of tomato seeds. So you can do that and then drain off the liquid, clean them up, rub them out, dry them, and you have your tomato seed ready for sowing next spring. So the first step is scraping out all the seed you can find, and it'll be a variable amount according to the size of tomato. Then you Place it in a cup with water and fill the cup with water and stir it around a bit and that will wet it and help the fermentation to begin. After up to a week, you will start to see mold on top and that's a really good sign. If you don't, it could still be right, depends how much tomato was in there. We only left this five days so it's not much mold. And the final stage is to drop the contents of your sieve onto card works well because that doesn't it doesn't stick to a plate so much. Put it in a sunny windowsill for up to a week and you've got your seeds. 
A dry room in the house is a good place to store seed. Also, in the case of this room, this is a conservatory, so it's very good for finishing off the drying process. Like, this is some pea seed which we shelled out this morning, and I'm just dropping them into a tray lined with newspaper, and it'll just sit on a sunny windowsill and it will dry and in fact that's the difference here we did the same with these seeds last week almost exactly a week ago and you can see how quickly they've dried and gone pretty hard in fact the seeds in this black tray here I wouldn't say they're 100% dry now but they're very close to it um, within a few days I'll be putting them into um, pots just to store I don't want to keep them in the sun for too long in fact, they, I've done it for up to a month and they've been fine, they don't, um, it doesn't affect the germination. And you can see how many seeds there are there. <laughs> yeah, it's not difficult to save a lot. Uh, these peas I'm keeping for pea shoots as well, so they're, they're very useful seed to save. And then garlic is another example of something very simple. So this is some of this year's garlic harvest, which actually I grew in the polytunnel. I find undercover you get really reliable, clean garlic. Uh, big size and so I'll just choose some of these biggest bulbs break open and choose the biggest cloves from them plant them and so it goes on and some of this garlic I've been saving now for 17 years without buying any more so you can do that you don't need to once you've got some garlic you like uh, and it's growing well for you just keep saving seed from it and um, even if it has rust on I find that it still grows healthily and you can save the seed from it and I should just mention potatoes too because that's a nice one to save your own keep medium-sized potatoes sort of egg size even if they're a bit green and um, just store them in the normal way plant them the following spring on the whole though with potatoes it's recommended and I think it's probably true that you don't want to keep them for more than one year there's a risk of some virus coming in but certainly for one year you're safe to do that and I'll sign off on that note. It's like seed saving, it's a whole nother skill to learn. Don't underestimate um, some of the potential difficulties, weather mostly, time as well. Sometimes how much space you need in the garden to do it when you're doing vegetables that need cross-pollination. That's probably the most difficult. Like so beetroot, for example, you know, six beetroot plants going to seed, that's quite a lot of space. Um, bear all those things in mind. Um, there's an article I've written, which is I think free online permaculture magazine. There's a chapter in Stefan, my new book about seed saving, uh, but do a bit of homework and, and then have a go. You will enjoy it.